having a, a change of, of room today, um, so it'll certainly change the, the ambience, I think, hopefully uh, in a positive way. Um, just to remind members and um, our uh, speakers that the meeting is going to be recorded. Um, you'll notice uh, the devices at the edge of the, the tables. Um, I'm told that the microphones are very, very um, sensitive. Um, and to be mindful, if uh, you're ever prone to having a grumble about someone across the room or the chair or, or whoever, that it will be, I'm told, picked up uh, and recorded. Um, so if anyone has still to switch off their mobile or put it to silent, if they could do that now, please. And we'll move on to item one, sedent and apologies. Tracy, can you provide the sedent and apologies, please? Thank you, Chair. I can confirm we've got 10 members present and one apology from Councillor Ian Blake. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, item two, declarations of interest. Do any members have a declaration of interest they wish to make? No? Thank you. Item three, minutes of the meeting held on the 15th of May. Can we note the, the minutes of the meeting held on 15th of May? Aye. Thank you. And item four uh, is the Police Scotland Dumfries and Galloway local police plan. Uh, six month performance update 1st of April 2018 to 30th of September 2018 uh, report by Director of Communities uh, we're joined today by Temporary Chief Superintendent Linda Jones uh, who you'll be aware has taken over from Chief Superintendent Gary Ritchie who's on secondment uh, and she's here to speak to the report this will be our first opportunity to scrutinise Police Scotland against the new local policing plan. Members will note that the police performance report has been provided in a new format, and hopefully you'll now have a colour version of that. And members will find, hopefully, the information easier to understand and provide a clearer picture of improvements through the addition of a five-year average. Uh, Linda is here to speak to the report, and before I open up uh, debate to members, is there anything you would like to speak about before members ask questions? Linda. Thank you, and good afternoon, members. Uh, there is one point I'd like to just cover before I take questions. Um, can I draw your attention to page 18 of the report, please? The protecting vulnerable people at risk of harm, and in particular, the significant increase of 34% in relation to the number of sexual crimes recorded during this period. I would just like to provide some context round about this figure as I can appreciate it does stand out as quite a substantial increase. Firstly, we have continued to experience a rise in sexual crime every year in the last five years in Dumfries and Galloway. This is a national trend and not any different from the rest of the country, if uh, that reassures you in any way. Um, there is no doubt there's a positive in this, that we do have increased reporting due to increased confidence from our victims, which is allowing them to come forward and engage with us and report what tends to be mostly historical crimes. So I would take that as a, a positive and I hope you agree. And to give you further context in that, in fact, over 65% of the rapes that have been recorded this year were historical in nature, dating back some years excuse me, and in domestic circumstances, domestic settings as well. A number of these victims have reported several crimes at the one time, so although it, it sounds as if it's a, a huge increase, there could be victims in there with four, five or even more, more crimes. <coughs> Furthermore to this, we've had a new piece of legislation introduced this year covering sextortion, which you've probably heard about in the media, and that's resulted in 10 additional crimes being recorded that weren't recorded in previous years. So, to provide reassurance to members, the division does have a dedicated unit to deal with the serious sexual crimes and the rapes, which ensures that our victims are treated with the utmost respect and dignity, and it's a very victim-focused approach. I appreciate the, the chance just to give you that information today. Happy Thanks. to take any questions and also any feedback in the format of the report would be appreciated as well. Okay, thank you, Linda. I'll open it up to uh, questions from members. 
Okay, so Leva. Just in there, 311, I think it's just a question of changing the terminology. And we had the second bullet point that says about the improvements across the road safety. And the uh, road crime section, column performance down. I mean, actual fact, performance has improved with uh, having fewer deaths and such on the, uh, the road safety. <coughs> Yeah, it's a very mixed picture um, for the road, the road crime this time. It's a it's a positive that our road crimes are significantly down, but I'm fully aware of the fact that our serious and slight injuries are um, are up. But I take your point, councillor. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And just generally, is the detection rate the same as the conviction rate? No. So. For what? For what, just, 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 just in so, um, our detection rate is the ones that we have enough to report someone to the procurator fiscal for. So that that's the difference. Right. So could we have some sort of indication about what the conviction rate? Is? Conviction rate. Yeah. Um, the conviction rate would probably have to come from Crown rather than mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. I can only advise on what we put forward to to Crown. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, uh, Councillor Bell. Uh, thanks, thanks, Chair. Thank, thanks, Chair. Uh, obviously, you know, it was raised at a community council meeting a few months ago about, you know, people still phoning 101, we're still getting issues there. And it was it was brought up at the community council. Um, obviously, it was a, a serious uh, antisocial behaviour uh, carry on within North West on Friesen Lock side. Uh, cars been tipped over, windows been smashed, and some vandalism going on. Quite quite serious. It's the worst it's been for a long time. And um, I believe it. Uh, the someone phoned 101 and took about half an hour for, for your police officer to get engaged. So there's still this delay and confusing the conf uh, com confusing messages coming from there. And it does. It's very very disappointing. Point in it that you know we're still getting wee glitches there. Yeah. I just hope we can get to the bottom of this. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry to hear there was such a delay because I can imagine that on a night when instance like that were going on, you know, the last thing you want to be is hanging on the phone waiting for it to be picked up. And having come from a national role in the control room, the performance is monitored and the calls are picked up a lot across a number of sites. So it's unusual it should take that long to be answered, but I can assure you that they look at their performance in relation to how long it takes them to answer a call. Um, and it should be getting better. Um, I was of the belief it had got better. It's not just that, it's, it's uh, the per public perception out there as well. You know, when the phone 101, you know, what's your postcode, your name, address, it's it's a slow process. It's not, Years ago, we had the control room in Dumfries and people knew lo local 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 knowledge and we've lost all that local knowledge and does concern we're still getting these glitches. But hopefully you do take this on board and it can be rectified. I do, Councillor, thank you. you. Uh, Councillor Ferguson. Thanks, uh, good afternoon. I'm, I'm going back to sex offences, but again, it would be really helpful um, because if I picked up correctly, a lot of this is historical. Yeah. It is, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm assuming the historical detection is because you've managed to arrest, and then there's a number of other crimes then get picked up at the same time. But, and I'm really, you know, when you look at it, you're right, 58% is pretty stark, isn't it, you know? But how, how many perpetrators are we talking about here? I, because part of the role here, of course, is to re try and reassure the public as much as we can that we've now got 251 predators running about the, uh, the area. You know, the, out of that 251 um, crimes reported, you know, how many perpetrators were that, you know, with the, I don't know indicate your 245 or whatever. Do, no. Can you give us a clue? Yeah, um, it's more repeat victims we have rather than repeat vi perpetrators. Right. Um, so I can't give you an exact figure on it, but there is nothing in, in the numbers that make me think we have a problem, a live ongoing problem in Dumfries and Galloway, if that helps any, because yeah. most of it is historical in nature and could have happened over a 10 year period yes. or longer. Um, if there was something more pressing or, or um, that concerned me more, I'd bring it to your attention. But I can try and break down the figures in the future for you, if that would be of assistance. We might help put it in perspective, I think. Okay. Councillor okay. uh, Chatteris. I'd just like to ask, um, we've grown up in Dumfries and Galloway thinking of the police force as our own. 
and we're now realizing it's not our own, it belongs to the whole of Scotland. Okay. And I'm worried sometimes that there's a continual flow of senior officers coming in and going out. And I well understand well, we're very lucky to have you as a senior officer to fill this position, but nevertheless, there's always be a discontinuity of new people coming in and people who are very experienced going out. And I, I just feel that we don't, if, if we don't have continuity, then we don't have confidence because we don't know you very well yet. Um, I'm hoping we we will do. And but I do think I do think we should keep keep a careful look on the people who have been transferred to go somewhere else to do a good job. But they've also got a good job to do here. Yeah. And I just feel that perhaps we're you know, if you get rid of your first eleven, then you've got to look further down. And I, I want our police to be absolutely expert on Dumfries and Galloway. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I take on your point. Um, I believe Gary Ritchie was here for around three years, which mm -hmm. is um, is the nature of this job, unfortunately, that you know you don't stay in a post now in Police Scotland much longer than that. But part of the reason for moving people about um, from myself, I've had experience as a superintendent in Ayrshire and in the control rooms in a national role, and it's to bring in experience. So for all you've lost some with Gary, hopefully I'll bring in some experience to the role as well. That helps any? Well, it does help because I think that's very important, and I would certainly support that. But it does get does take time to get to know an area just as big as this, the second biggest land area in the United Kingdom, and it's a big area to police. I mean, it with the same force, you haven't yeah. got any more. The the other one just on this on the side, and, and I tried to bring it up. I, I wanted to bring it up earlier on when we were going through the minutes, but it does say here the council would wish a minimum of four dedicated rural officers to cover the four areas of this region. Um, and it's in the minutes, and I, I, I tried to find out where it was, I've seen it now, on page seven. It, has that happened? Uh, we do have a number of um, rural officers. I, I, think, sorry, I, I, I think that's actually the fire, fire and rescue oh, I service. I turned over two pages, have I? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm getting annoyed. No wonder I couldn't say it. Yeah. I'll, I'll, wait the, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for the next day. Right? I'll bring it up then. Hold that thought. Uh, just on the, 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 the point that you raised, John, about the change of senior officers, I think Linda has made a good point about the experience that she brings. But also what she didn't mention is that she has been here for several months in the rank of superintendent, so she has had the opportunity to build up her knowledge uh, and experience. And certainly I've been comfortable um, with that when I learned that the change in leadership had had changed. Um, well, that's very reassuring. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Murray. Oh, sorry. Um, but, uh, I think we well, I think maybe we'll just... No, no, yeah. no. You first. <laughs> okay. uh, a couple of things. One, one was um, with relation to the, the, the sexual crimes, and you mentioned you mentioned actually uh, about the new antisocial behaviour and sexual harm legislation and that 13 crimes, as they say, were uh, in relation to that legislation are essentially new crimes. <coughs> um, in terms of the detection of those crimes, are they, I mean, I think there was always a little bit of anxiety around how some of this would work in practice. How do, you know, is the de detection rate good for these types of crimes? It's, it's one thing I don't have, Council, in front of me is the detection rate, but um, in general, um, they can be quite protracted inquiries because they're usually involving the internet or, um, or certainly the sextortion ones that I, I was mm -hmm. talking about where, but I can certainly get um, a breakdown on the detection rate for you. That's not a problem. Yes, I have a particular interest because the last thing I ever did in the Scottish Parliament, the last amendment I ever put through was about upskirting and after some discussion with yeah. the, the uh, minister that we agreed to an amendment which would we hoped would deal with some of that and I just... I have a particular interest in knowing whether or not that actually uh, works Absolutely, in practice. Yes, I can get you that information, not a problem. The, the, the Scottish Government will have an interest in whether that's working as well. The other thing I read, <coughs> which I have always a bit of a bee in my bonnet about, is uh, on terms of drug dealing and substance misuse, the, the reference there is particularly to people who are supplying heroin and cocaine across the region. Again, I was wondering, given that the law changed to make new psychoactive substances illegal <coughs> in terms of their sales, not in terms of possession, but in terms of their sale, whether we are yet seeing any of that. It's not a, it's not a crime trend that we've seen mm. uh, down here. It tends still to be the heroin 
And the cocaine are the, the problem substance for us. Yeah, so we're not yes. seeing spice and things like that coming in. Yeah. No. Councillor Davison. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I was looking at um, the the notes um, on common assault, um, and so the, the 952 crimes committed um, compared to 872 last year, the figure that stood out for me was the 98 of the crimes, sort of roughly 10%, had been assaults on emergency workers. Yeah. And um, it certainly, what, what was an eye opener, I have to say, the, the, the first thing that sprung to mind was whether we had any comparative information for previous years on that? I mean, is there, is there a trend or...? That's, uh, um, thanks. Uh, that's, any, any sort of additional okay. information? It is an increase on okay. previous years, um, and it's a worrying increase yeah. for myself that a number of my officers are being assaulted um, and other emergency workers as well. Um, in general, the number of assaults is too high, um, and I'm trying to get a grip of that at the moment and um, stop it going up any further. But the, um, the emergency workers one is a particular um, worry. So I'm just trying to make sure my officers are sufficiently trained, have the right equipment, so they are best placed to get into scenarios. Um, we had a number of instances over the last few weeks with officers being assaulted that I'll be looking at in more detail and how I can prevent further instances going forward. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Lever. Thank you, Chair. Um, I appreciate that Dumfries and Galloway is a very safe area to, leave, to live, but I just wonder how we actually get this across to the public, you know, in terms of how safe it is here. You know, we have um, these expressed, or some of the figures expressed as crimes per 100,000 population compared to the national average, I mean, that would give reassurances and some instances for the members of the public, many of whom, or some of whom still believe it. This is a very dangerous place to live. Yeah. You know, if you were to look at the ground at night, particularly this time of year, because of the, the crime level, which is very, very low. And in terms of the, uh, the road safety, <coughs> well, we have the number of people seriously injured and killed it. I wonder if that could be broken down to pedestrian, cyclists, and car users, because obviously modern cars are much safer than they were in the past. But, you know, pedestrians and cyclists are still very vulnerable, just in order to actually pick up trends in, in those instances. Yeah, I can, um, I can try and get that broken down for you. And I take on your point, it is a very safe place to live, but when you look at some of the figures, you need context round about them to actually represent what, what we're talking about here, what the increase is. Um, we try and put as many positive messages out on our Facebook page and to the local press as we do appeals and stories of uh, crimes that we're reporting on. So we try and bal try, we're trying to balance in what we're reporting on, but uh, I think context is very important when it comes to reporting. But I think just to follow that on, it's, it, it's important... Uh as, as well, that you know, we have community officers attending community councils, and, and invariably the community officers will be uh, certainly in Galloway, reporting very little in terms of crime, but they do provide that reassurance um, in, in context. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for the chief superintendent? Yeah, Councillor Ferguson. Um, page 16 is actually the stop searches. Um, I'm not too sure what the difference is between. Stop and search conducted as total, and then stop and search conducted. Now, I take from the stuff in here that there's um, from the narrative that uh, you changed the way it was, it, it, it was working there. Yes, we have. Um, so, are we saying then out of the 753 uh, stop and searches that we had, 261 had a, a, a by positive, I take it you mean you found what you were looking for? Yes, Councillor, so that, that could right? be drugs, weapons, could, uh, be could be a number of things, but that's what the positive represents. It's been a positive stop search. Okay, um, and just the other thing, I, I'm, I'm particularly interested in the uh, the violence against the uh, first responders, whoever, you know, whoever that service is. It'd be really interesting to actually see just what the breakdown with that was. I know we've got the, uh, the, uh, in the local fire service here as well. But uh, it could be ambulance service, it could be, uh, I'm assuming you'll, you'll, do you include hospital staff in that as well? Yes, NHS are included in that, ambulance staff and nurses so and it, doctors. It would give us again an idea or, you know, again a bit of perspective. In, in a, I mean, any assault is bad or any, or any abuse is bad. Do these figures include abuse, for example? Um, yes. Or purely assaults? It's just assaults, it's under right. common assaults, yeah. So do we keep stats on... 
It, it's not something um, we push <coughs> at the moment, but I can make some inquiries and see if it's something I can have further broken down for you, Councillor. Well, I'm just thinking because uh, 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 sometimes it stops just short of assault, but it's just as the people still have to go home having, having suffered the abuse yep. and, the, and the after effects of it. It's not quite the same as having a broken nose, but um, it's certainly got a, 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 a major bearing on their health and well-being mm -hmm. uh, afterwards. That's, that's your staff, fire staff, ambulance staff, a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think it'd be really interesting <coughs> if we could get a real picture of what it's like in, in the county. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. We'll move to the recommendation. Um, so, members are asked to scrutinise performance report of the Friesen Galloway from Police Scotland for the period 1st of April 2018 to 30th September 2018, as detailed in the appendix. Are we happy to agree that we'll scrutinise the report? Okay. And thank you very much, Chief Superintendent. Thank you very much. <coughs> Okay, so we'll move on to item five, Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, Dumfries and Galloway local plan, six month performance <coughs> update for the 1st of April 2018 to the 30th September 2018 report by Director of Communities. The local senior officer, Hamish McGee, is here to speak to the report. Is there anything you, you would like to update members on, Hamish, before we move to questions on the report? Thanks, Chair. Yes, there, are, there is a couple, and actually one of them is exactly the, the item that Councillor Charteris brought up earlier on. Um, the, the figure of four was a submission by yourselves towards the consultation in terms of the service transformation. Uh, the outcome of that uh, consultation is about to come out nationally, uh, but notwithstanding, uh, the service didn't wait, if you like, on that to come out. So I'm not sure what the final total will be. But um, we did put a business case across uh, to uh, the, the service and we were successful in securing the first of uh, a number of posts, I hope, one of 18 nationally, uh, and we appointed last week for an individual to take up a role in the stewartry. Uh, that post will cover Kirkubri, Dalbiti, New Galloway, Castle Douglas. Uh, and that will provide us with um, greater resilience in terms of our RDS availability, but also provide us with a full-time resource that will be able to do things like home fire safety visits and support partnership working across a whole range of areas. So uh, I wanted to bring you up to speed on that. The individual will start on the 7th of January. With a little bit of training, they will then become live on the 14th of January. And that will, we'll see how that goes. But I intend to put forward a further case for further um, posts like that for different areas within the uh, Dumfries and Galloway. So very positive. Uh, on, on top of that as well, you're all aware of the, the new appliances, the new technology that um, we showcased earlier in the year. Training has been going on at a pace. We now have the two vehicles within the area. Uh, and I'm pleased to tell you that Annan will go on the run on the 4th of February 2019, with Dremor following them shortly on the 20th of March. 2019. So both appliances will be up and running by that time. That's the update. If yeah, uh, and that's that's very good news about the, the new appliances, Hamish. I'm sure they'll be put to, to good use. So we'll now open up to members' questions on the six month report. Councillor Ferguson. Uh, uh, Remember, I, I'm not sure if it's, I don't think it's in, in here per se, but it's just a, a being opportunistic and asking the question. Um, I, I know that you said that you were upskilling some of your staff um, in terms of life support at the roadside. Um, have we got any update on that? Uh, this is the out of hospital cardiac arrest, yeah. uh, emergency medical response. Yeah. It's. It's uh, still subject to national negotiations. Um, the service and the, the national union are con continuing to have dialogue. It's not just a Scottish Fire and Rescue Service thing, it is a national. Uh, and I'm, I believe that um, negotiations are well advanced. Uh, it is, as you would expect, linked to a pay um, offer. Um, this year, the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service offered uh, uniform staff a 2% pay increase. 
Um, so anything that comes thereafter uh, will be linked to the new skills that they adopt. So I'm assuming that something will happen before the 1st of April, but uh, I don't know. Yep. Just in the back of the Hamish about the false alarm equipment fail, it's quite alarming. Just sorry about the pun that you've got 473 for the first six months. Seems as if it's are they just I know it's domestic, but are they in kind of RSL houses or all types? It's it's all types, and and to be honest, as I think I've said in this forum previously, it it's a kind of it's one of these things that it is increasing. But it's because of the the fact that we're putting in so many of these automated devices in. So whilst I, you know, I'm I'm never like to see my performance get worse, if you like, in terms of this, and I'm always trying to bring it down. I, I'm always more reassured that I'm getting early warning that as a result we are, you know, in a number of instances being able to get to uh, instances much quicker, and uh, the, the you know the fire or the uh, the emergency that's taking place is, is kept to the very bare minimum. So I, I'm, I'm difficult to defend the performance, but I would reassure you that you know I'm I'm happy that we're getting called to these very quickly. That's fine. Thank you. Councillor Faber. Just to pick up on what uh, Councillor Stitt said there, Hamish, in relation to false alarms, um, is it just bad housekeeping in relation to the premise owners? To be honest, I think it's it's a mixture of of that of age aging systems. It's you know it's about uh, depends on the weather. You know you get the the wee um, mites that get into the, the systems. It's uh, th there's a whole host of things. And what we do is what we try to do is work with people in order to improve things. So it might be a management. We'll talk to them. Uh, we'll, and things do improve. And I think that's the other thing I should probably say is that. <laughs> It isn't the same reporter constantly. It's not the same person giving us massive problems. You know, when we do see a, a spike, we'll have dialogue with them. We'll improve those management. Um, certain organisations have gone ahead, uh, and in particular the council, in investing heavily in new automated fire alarm systems and bringing them up. And we, we see one building, you know, then starts to improve, and then it moves to another, and then it, it improves. <coughs> so it, it's very difficult to give you, you know, a point a finger. Mm -hmm. It's People are doing the best that they can, and as a service, what we try to do is to, to assist them in, to, in improving that, that picture. Okay. Any other questions? Councillor Chatters. Is it a matter of con concern for us, though? In the um, information which you give us, you say um, if the services are meeting their targets, on the next page it shows those which are meeting their targets and those which aren't. And um, I mean, you, there are five which aren't meeting their targets. Um, is that a matter of concern for us when looking at this? Because I, I can't see how you would always achieve your targets. On the other hand, we're to scrutinise to see whether you do achieve your target. Um, and there are five there: deliberate secondary fires non-fatal fire casualties, <coughs> special services, RTC, false alarms, and militia we've talked about, and false alarm equipment failure. Um, there's bound to be a fluctuation in the reporting periods, what, and it seems to be very difficult to achieve what, what, what you've been set out to achieve. That is, with every service meeting their target. It's a very interesting question that you ask, and it's it's a very difficult question for me to actually answer without, you know, probably saying, you know, what about what is performance all about, you know? And for me, performance is about you holding me to account when things do kind of go a slightly array. If you look at the the numbers in the performance report as it stands, I mean, these are really really small numbers, mm. and when you get the likes of the non-fire fatal fire casualties you have an increase of two to three in a six month period. And every one of those are, are resulting of a vehicle, a road traffic collision, <coughs> or a, you know, a, a ride on lawnmower. So the fire is involving the vehicle and the person, it's not even in a premise. It's, it's the interpretation of it all about how, and that's why the context is, is very, is key for me in terms of how I um, provide that information to you. Uh, I think it's, it, targets are useful. Um, I'm more comfortable with a reduction or an increase. 
and that you rightly every so often, every six months, sit and, and you make to hold me to account and say, why has that increase occurred? And we will take steps in order to reduce them. Um, but you are absolutely right. I mean, in some of them, it is so difficult for me to actually achieve them uh, with any sort of consistency. Um, but that's my challenge. May, may I just follow up one? Should they therefore be recategorised um, in, in, into a section of not important, or I don't know quite how it would be phrased, because clearly you, you'll be concentrating on the, on the on the most important ones of these, because they're in they're, they're in a separate category. I think that would be a, a conversation. Ultimately, we have to remember that these indicators come from a, a national right. agreement between Scottish government and um, with um, the service. And then those indicators are agreed by yourselves within the local plan right. about which ones you wish to see. So if you like, it's your determination about the importance of these indicators at a local level as to which ones I bring to this, this um, uh, forum. Um, we are going to, I hope, hold a workshop in February where I will bring a number of other indicators uh, and, our, and um, provide you with a lot more detail, which you'll be able to have a look at and see if that would assist you in your scrutiny uh, moving forward. So um, we, will move, we will move to a slightly different style, but with a lot more information behind it, and it will probably assist you in understanding when those peaks and troughs in terms of each of those indicators. But I, I would never say that any indicator is, is any less important than others. They are all important because they involve people. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Uh, thanks, Hamish. If I pick you up right there, what you're coming back with in February will that include so, uh, a lot of the preventative work that you do? Because um, uh, this is reactive. This, this stuff here, isn't it? You in, in this report today. So we know you didn't sit in the fire station playing cards. So, <laughs> 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 so right. Um, allegedly. Um, I, you know, you're, you're doing other things at the same time, checking, uh, and I'm, I'm just kind of wondering here, is, you, you know, can we, in February, can we get a, a better idea of all the preventative work that you do? Um, there will be a lot more detail in it. I, I can't say that I can give you everything. There will be a lot of inputs. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the outputs, uh, I, I'm very much in the fire services, very much you know, about partnership working. Yeah. So it's a lot of the work that we put in, if you like, we, we don't particularly get credit for because the, the credit goes to the group or the multi-agency group who are doing the work, and we're just part of that team. Um, but where we can, yes, we will bring you further detail, <coughs> further information on <coughs> what we do. I think that's where I was coming from here because we know you do a lot that people don't actually see. It's not publicised the way it maybe could be, just your involvement in all of these things. So um, I welcome that when we see it in February. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, Councillor Murray. Um, uh, in your uh, section about deliberate secondary fires, you mentioned that there had been a spike. And it was uh, identified that a gang of kid, kid, kids congregating around none of them were responsible for the majority of those fires. I just wondered in a situation like that, when it's been identified that youngsters are being involved in, in fire setting, obviously they could go th through the sort of children's healing system or whatever, but you know, what sort of action is taken to enable those children maybe to see the danger in, in their behaviour and so on? I mean, is the fire service involved in sort of any... Um, uh, uh, sort, of, sort of relationship with those young people, so that they they maybe can understand better the you know what, what they're getting themselves involved in. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, I mean, we go to schools and talk to the primary. Go to schools all the time, and particularly where uh, something like that happens, we will immediately go into the school. So uh, an example of that would also be um, you know we had a, a significant fire in Kirkcubri, mm. uh, and within 40 hours my staff were in Kirkcubri High School and you know they were doing all telling them all about the dangers etc etc and the same thing here and, and in terms of this group it was very much a multi-agency approach because it wasn't just about fires it was about all the other antisocial behavior that was going on around about it so we liaise with our partners as well and, and uh, as you can see from the figures you know we, we did have a, a blip mm. but 
clearly... And if you had success afterwards? Or, so. And that's the way I would look at it. If it was a trend that was continually increasing, and I would say that we hadn't got a grip of it, but as you can see, it, we've got back into the, the realms of the norm, which suggests that we have made a, a significant difference to those individuals. Okay, thank you. Councillor Chatteris. Yes, um, Con Salak House is regularly attacked by vandals and set alight, and it obviously features quite heavily in deliberate fire setting. Um, I happen to know that the owner is coming back from Hong Kong shortly, and I was wondering whether one of your officers might maybe meet up with him to discuss how he can better protect his property from these continual fires which are being set in what is a grade one listed building in Dumfries and Galloway. Whether it can be preserved from the damage being caused, I don't know, but it is a grade one and he is coming back and therefore he might be able to make contact with him to find out whether in future it could be better protected from vandals. It's, um, we'd welcome the opportunity to speak to the, the owner, absolutely. In terms of the security of the premise, we are not the best people to, to provide that kind of advice on how you might do it. Um, but we would be able to uh, signpost them to those that could. Uh, in terms of cancel itself, again, that's another great example of where a multi-agency approach was taken to it. So the council have been involved ourselves, <coughs> uh, and it's, it, it can't just be about fire because you know we don't have any uh, authority to tell people what to do with the Grade One building and how to provide that security. Uh, but yeah, we would very much welcome the opportunity to speak to the individual and, and uh, hopefully get a resolution to the number of times that we've had to well, If he makes contact with me, should I ask him to get Great. to make contact with you and you can put him in the right direction Absolutely. For, for the future I'd appreciate that. of his building? Okay, so if there are no further questions, we're happy to move to recommendation. Okay, so the recommendation, members asked to scrutinise the performance report for Dumfries and Galloway um, from the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service period 1st April 2018 to 30th September 2018 as detailed in the appendix. Members happy with that recommendation? Thank you. Um, and sorry, did you say something? Then? No, no, sorry. Um, item six, um, other business. Uh, I've not been notified of any other urgent business, and so we'll bring the meeting to a close. Thank you very much, everyone, for their attendance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.